Here we have a C4 section B question. There are two questions in section B, each one's worth 18 marks. In this question we have a glass ornament O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is a truncated pyramid on a rectangular base. So if we check out that this figure actually makes sense, all those letters then, we've got O, which is at the origin, and then we have the XY plane, and lying in the XY plane we've got the points A, B, C. So the rectangle OABC is our rectangular base. We've then got the points D, E, F and G up at the top here and they look as if they might be parallel to the XY plane. We can check that out by looking at their heights which is the Z coordinates. We notice that all of the Z coordinates are actually 24 so they've all got the same height. So this rectangle D, E, F, G is indeed parallel to the XY plane. We're given dimensions in centimetres, so when we're answering the questions, we'll be able to put units in our answers. It's worth just picturing where this shape has come from, so we can tell what we've actually got is a pyramid, and then if we were to chop the top off the pyramid, what we're le left with is the shape of the truncated pyramid. Taking a look through the question, we've got several parts to answer here. The first part should be fairly straightforward, just writing down a couple of vectors. Finding a length, that should be Pythagoras again, shouldn't cause too much trouble. Then we're showing that something's perpendicular. Whenever we get show that, we need to make sure that we show plenty of working. Things being perpendicular, that'll be to do with the dot product being zero. We must remember to keep going back to the question. We might get to the end of that and then forget to look at the next part. Hence, so using what we've just done, find the Cartesian equation of the plane. So our answer to that last section will actually be an equation, and it must be in Cartesian form. We're then going to write down some vector equations. When we see write down, that usually means we can literally just write them down. Little, if any, calculation should be needed there. Show that, so again, we're going to have to show lots of working. They meet at this point. So we'll show that the lines all have this point lying on them, then they would meet at that point. And then we're given that some other lines meet at that point. I'm guessing this point P is going to be where the top of the pyramid would have been before it was truncated. Finally, we're given information about how to calculate the volume of a pyramid, and we're going to calculate the volumes of a couple of different pyramids to find the volume of the ornament. I'm guessing at this point, it's going to be like the whole pyramid before it was truncated and then the small pyramid at the top, which is the piece that was chopped off. In part one, we're just going to find a couple of vectors. It helps to write out the points as the position vectors of the points. So the point C with coordinates of 15, 0, 0 becomes the vector C, and we should underline our letters when they're vectors, and that vector would be 15, 0, 0, written as a column vector. It's usually easier to deal with it like this. If you prefer to write that as 15i plus 0j plus 0k, then that's fine, but will probably take you a little longer. So, in order to start, we're going to use the vector cd, and so that's going to be d minus c. So we'll be doing 9 minus 15, 6 minus 0, and 24 minus 0. So writing that out, we've got d minus c, so that's the vector d minus the vector c, which gives us our answer. The vector cd is minus 6, 6, 24. Notice that this is a vector, it's not coordinates, so our answer must be written as a vector. We do a similar thing to find the vector CB. So we do B minus C, which was 15, 20, 0, minus 15, 0, 0, giving us 0, 20, 0. And again, the answer is written as a vector. We then move on to part two, where, oh, so just those vectors, subtractions, if you were to do, instead of, for example, b minus c, if you did c minus b, you would have got 0 minus 20, 0, which would be the vector bc instead of cb. You've got to make sure you get them in the correct order. It's the second one minus the first one. So c to b, b 
minus c. On to the second part of the question. We were looking for the length of the edge CD, and we can just use Pythagoras. We've actually already got the vector CD, so it's literally just doing Pythagoras on these three values. Pythagoras works in 3D, which is pretty neat, and what we get then is that the length that we require is the square root of 6 squared plus 6 squared plus 24 squared. So if we evaluate that, we get the exact value of 18 root 2. If we need to use the answer later in the question, we'll use that exact value of 18 root 2. Here, we'll write down our final value rounded, so 25.5 and that was in centimetres, as the question told us the units, so we can write that down. Also, because we've rounded, we should write down the rounding that we've used. So in this case, we rounded it to three significant figures. Now we need to show that 4i plus k is perpendicular to CD and to CB. So what we can do is take the vector 4i plus k and write that in column vector form. So that's 4i, there were no j's, and 1k. And if we do the dot product of that dotted with cd or with cb, we should get 0. This is because we know that the dot product, a dot b, divided by the lengths of the vectors a and b, is equal to cos theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. We want the angle to be 90 degrees. And cos of 90 degrees is 0. This bit here should still have mod a, mod b in the denominator. There's a problem with the video there. Apologies for that. OK, so we need to show clear and full working here because we were told they're perpendicular. We're actually showing that this is the case. So we're doing the dot product here. So we're doing the product of the i parts of the vectors, the x components, so 4 multiplied by minus 6, plus the product of the j part, 0 times 6 is 0, plus the product of 1 and 24. So that gives us minus 24 plus 24, which is 0. We then repeat the process for the vector dotted with cb, where cb was 0, 20, 0. So in this case, we get all three products are 0, and the sum of those is 0. So that means that we have shown now that 4i plus k is perpendicular to both CD and CB. Now, these both lie in the plane, which means that if CD and CB are both in the plane and both perpendicular to 401, then 401 must be normal to the whole plane. So we can use this with the equation r dot n minus a dot n equals 0, where n is the normal vector, 4, 0, 1, and a is any vector, or position vector of a point in the plane. So I'm going to choose the point C, so my a in this part of the equation is going to be the vector 15, 0, 0. So if I do a dot n, that's 15, 0, 0, dotted with 4, 0, 1, which will give me 60. So I can put that together to get the equation of the plane. So in this equation, the r in r dot n is the general vector x, y, z. So when we do r dot n, we get 4x plus 0y plus z. So that's 4x plus z. And then I've just moved the a dot n over to the other side, so I've got 4x plus z equals 60. So now we're writing down these equations of lines. So the line OG, we're going to use this way of writing vector equations of lines, that you get a point on the line plus a multiple of the direction vector. Now the origin lies on the line OG, so we don't really need to write the point on the line, just like you wouldn't write an answer with a plus zero in it. So we get r equals lambda multiplied by the direction vector, and this is the direction vector of OG, where G had coordinates 3, 6, 24, so the direction vector could be 3, 6, 24, but if we divide everything through by 3, and we can simplify direction vectors, then we do get the simpler form. 
It's always okay to simplify a direction vector because a shorter vector in the same direction still goes in the same direction. We must not simplify position vectors because then we would change the coordinates of the point. But simplifying here is always going to be quite useful to simplify calculations. So for the other line, we're going from A to F, so the direction vector is F minus A. Again, being careful to get those in the correct order. So we do F minus A, direction vector of 3 minus 624. Again, this will simplify, again, by dividing through by 3 to give 1 minus 2, 8. So we have the line AF is R equals a point on the line, and here I've just cho chosen the point 0, 20, 0. That looked like the easiest point I knew that was on the line, plus a multiple of the direction vector where I'm just using this simplified version of the direction vector of AF. So then showing where these points intersect, we've got that the point has an x-coordinate of 5. So if we look at OG, that's this line, R equals lambda multiplied by 1, 2, 8. So if the x-coordinate is 5, then lambda multiplied by 1 must be 5. So lambda is 5. Now, that means that the y-coordinate would be lambda, which is 5, multiplied by 2, and the z-coordinate would be 5 multiplied by 8. So the y-coordinate is 10, and the z-coordinate, 5 multiplied by 8, is 40. That means that 5, 10, 40 is a point that lies on OG. We repeat the procedure for the line AF, and again, here, if the x-coordinate is 5, we've got 0 plus lambda multiplied by 1 is 5, so again we get lambda is 5. So doing the same sort of thing, we get that the y-coordinate is 20 plus 5 multiplied by minus 2, which is 10, and the z-coordinate is 0 plus 5 multiplied by 8, which is 40, exactly what we wanted. So 5, 10, 40 lies on AF. So that means that we've shown that the point 5, 10, 40 lies on both lines, so those lines must intersect at the point 5, 10, 40. And it was a show that question, maybe not many marks, but we need to show it clearly when we're doing those sorts of questions. So now we're on to the final part of the question where we're finding the volume of this ornament. I found it quite helpful to add some lines onto the diagram to picture the original pyramid that's been truncated or had the top chopped off to make the ornament. So looking at the pyramid POABC, that's going from the top of where the pyramid would have reached and using the base right at the bottom here, the OABC. And the height of that pyramid would be the Z coordinate of point P. So this pyramid has a height of 40. So we can put the 40 into our formula. We also need to know the dimensions of the base, and we've got that it's 15 by 20 centimetres. So the height is 40, and the base is 15 by 20, which is 300. We were given the formula for the volume of a pyramid, so we just do a third multiplied by 40 multiplied by 300, giving us 4,000 centimetres cubed. And we should be writing in units here, units of volume are cubed, and the dimensions were all in centimetres. Now we move on to pyramid PDEFG. So that's the pyramid which would be the bit that was removed. So we've got P and then this E, D, F and G are the rectangle at the height of 24 there. So the height for this pyramid is the distance between the z-coordinates. So 40 minus 24 will give us the height of this small pyramid. So that means 40 minus 24, that's a 16 centimetre height. We then look at the base for this pyramid, and we've got this length here, which is 9 minus 3, so that's the distance between the x-coordinates, because if you look at the x-axis, that's the direction we're going here. Then in the y direction, the other side of the rectangle, the distance in between the y coordinates, that's 14 minus 6. So we have 9 minus 3 multiplied by 14 minus 6. 
So that gives us 6 multiplied by 8, which is 48. So the base is 48 centimetres squared, which means the volume is one third multiplied by 16 multiplied by 48, which is 256 centimetres cubed. And the volume of the whole ornament then, well, that would be if we took the whole pyramid and then take away the pyramid on the top. So we do the 4,000 minus the 256 to give us 3,744 centimetres cubed. And then we finish the question. The mark scheme is here. We can see where the marks were allocated. If you want to pause the video and take a look through those, you can do that. And then also we have here the marks for the final two parts of the question. You'll notice that it does say centimetres cubed in the final answer there, and it does say correct answer only. It's always worth writing down your units and making sure that you've shown plenty of working. There's often more than one way to do things, but make sure that everything you do is shown clearly so that the examiner can follow your methods.